Before continuing our Dhamma talk regarding seven strategies of dealing with taints and mental impurities as explained by Buddha, I would like to explain something <clears throat> regarding the basic nature of the Buddha's teaching. Buddha's teaching, especially mindfulness meditation and the spiritual development is not based on any kind of a speculation or intellectual thinking. It is based on practicality and relevancy of the human problems and human existence. Some people, they may think that Meditation is a sort of the Buddhist mysticism or esotericism, which is intended for a few, a handful number of people. Buddha's teachings are generally aimed at improving the consciousness in the mind of the people, and thus improving the quality of life and developing the courage and mental stamina and that wonderful spiritual serenity to live through all the good and bad situations of life. <clears throat> in this discourse, Buddha clearly outlined and clearly defined the practical strategies which are applicable by everyone, regardless of any religious backgrounds. If anyone is sincerely interested to handle with the daily issues of suffering, such as emotional problems and general barrier kind of mental sufferings and also daily issues <clears throat> of life, one can explore. It will benefit him or that person. This is how Bora's teachings are very much unrestricted, uh, not limited to a few number of people alone. His teachings are like the wonderful medicine and wonderful nectar and food, uh, which is intended for consumption for everybody, regardless of the social status or religious backgrounds. If he is a really interested person without fanatic ideas and extreme you know, orthodox views, he can explore and be benefited by it. That's how basic nature of Buddha's teaching is. Once you know it, you will appreciate deeply and greatly. <clears throat> Through God the Buddhist text, when you study, all the words said by Buddha, you will see a wonderful human being endowed with unique superhuman qualities, especially intellectual qualities and spiritual qualities which surpass ordinary human thinking, human ideas. Meditation is the one of the great aspects of Buddha's teaching, because it covers every aspect for improvement of the human consciousness and human thinking. And if one is uh, seriously interested and committed to practice, even for a while, he can be benefited by it. If that person is a very committed meditator, regularly practicing meditation in his daily life, incorporating it into his busy life schedule. He can even develop a wonderful dynamism, wonderful mental dynamism that see everything in a very clear and um, enlightened perspective rather than emotional or egoistic perspective. That's uh, what Bora's teachings make outstanding and different from other religion. What I never said, in, even in the, the beginning, come and ye, believe in me, so that you will be safe. He never said such a word. Instead, he just said, come and ye, listen. 
And if this is good and beneficial, just apply it. If that's not relevant to you, just ignore it. How liberal and how wonderful and how abiding his teachings. That's why in um, reciting the attributes of the Buddha, we used to say, Ehi Pasiko. Ehi Pasiko means come and see by yourself. You are not forced to convert. You are not pushed to do anything. That's why Buddhism is not a teaching of, not a religion of conversion. It's a teaching of conviction. And based on one's own conviction, one can apply it. Once you understand this, the attributes of the Dharma as a Hibasiko become very clear and very simple. It's self-evident. It's very wonderful to learn Buddha's teaching and more simple and clear explanations. In this discourse, you see how Buddha simply and practically outline all the applicable strategies. If you have to study all these in Buddhist texts and Pali language, it will be quite far off from your reach because they are written in ancient Pali language uh, whose structure and linguistic patterns are quite uh, complex for ordinary person. Now, I try to explain all those uh, Buddha's wonderful words in clear terms and simple language, which bring closer to your mind and your daily life and your daily condition. In this discourse, I've already explained altogether five strategies. And then on the last day, I explained about how one should avoid, one should avoid some things or environments or social associations which can contaminate your mind and which can cause unnecessary suffering. Not only well animals and bad people, he also explained how do you should avoid. And that last day's talk, I need to explain something which is very much far-reaching and broad. That was used by Buddha. If a person is applying the PIF strategy of the avoiding, there is a, something we used to get involved in everyday life. In Buddhist, it's called the Gotra. Gotra means pasture. Go means cattle. Chara means the place where the, the cows roam and unwell for their daily food in the grassland. So this is called the Gautra. It is an idea, meta expression, which refers to the mental focus and the area of the mind, areas where our human mind always fall on. Our family affairs, our daily personal affairs, and uh, our daily works, and our daily conditions, and, and also the as uh, many, many, many endless things uh, uh, where human mind and human consciousness always wander off. The whole world is the pasture of the mind, not only our individual life, and not only that, human mind is very much. Wonderful, it can transcend uh, even the time. It, it thinks about the past, it thinks about the future, it thinks about the present, it thinks about this and that and endless stuff. It also thinks about deep, very philosophical and profound aspect of life. How I come, I'm here? Why am I here for? What's the purpose of I'm, I'm being, being here? And uh, how I should do, how I should suffer, so much suffering, so many tragedies, how and why other people are suffering lots, and why people live this short life, etc. And depending on our curiosity and, and intellect, we explore this kind of endless stuff of the consciousness, and uh, where the consciousness always falls on. It's called the Gautra. Gautra, in this case, means not cattle or cow, it's the mind. Tara means the place where the mind wanders. 
the whole world, regardless of time, geography, distance, location, is the Gojira. So how wonderful it is. The time itself is very much all encompassing. And a meditator, the one who is on spiritual path, should let his mind wander up in the proper place, proper mental focus. This is the word called Gautra, mental posture. A person on the spiritual path needs to have proper Gautra, proper area of the, the focus of his mind so that the mind can remain involved, can remain engaged in it. In this case, a meditator need to let his consciousness focus on object of meditation or whatever current mental and physical phenomena arise so that he can keep his consciousness there. And this way the mind remain focused, agitated, and peaceful, not contaminated or not disturbed by those temporary pollutants, such as anger, craving or desire or confusion, etc. In this case, Shiva mindfulness meditation and the object of meditation itself is the kochara, the posture of the mind. Very wonderful. In Buddhist text, it's always mentioned about that. It's very broad. In the previous day's talk, I mentioned about it. I don't mention about it because it is a very broad and very wide. Now I explain it. It meditated when applying the fifth strategy. Should, he should have proper areas of the mental focus where the mind remains focused and immersed in it so that the more wholesome, positive mental conditions are created and increased. And this way, necessary bujang, positive mental qualities of enlightenment develop and increase. This is a brief explanation. Now let me continue to explain the number six strategy. We have to pick up where we left in the previous day's talk. Now let me quote what Buddha has said in the discord. <clears throat> Disciple, what taints a man into this to be tackled by means of removing? This strategy is called in Pali, we nodna. We is a prefix. Nodna, nuda, and ana. nuda means to take out, to extract, to pull out. And that means act, act of pulling out, especially. Body work itself is very simple and self-explanatory. <clears throat> so the error we know now means error pulling out, especially in this case, by means of mindful observation, a non, a detached mindfulness. Not me and mine, not a robust mindfulness meditation, not genius mindfulness meditation. It's nobody's mindfulness meditation. It is meditation itself. The mind itself, itself is observing and noting and whatever mental entities come up. Ida bhikkhu 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 yoni so obana kama widaka nadi wasedi. Here in this world, disciple, the meditator see the moment any sensual thoughts arise. He used wisdom. In this case, wisdom developed through mindfulness or mindfulness itself in reflecting on the consequence of accepting this sensual thought, thoughts associated with the sensual pleasure, wishing to enjoy this and that, etc. 
when such thoughts arise, he knows, oh, this destruction arise, and which can disturb and which can increase subsequent unwholesome thoughts. I should not accept it. Like the way I should not accept the stray dogs into my house. He reflects on the consequence, possible consequence of the unwholesome sensual thoughts. So Nadi was it. He doesn't accept it on his mind. Na means not. Adi means up. Wazidi means ex. let it stay. He doesn't let it stay on his mind. In English, we interpret it as he doesn't accept it or he doesn't enjoy it. Bajahadi, um, he threw out, he discard by letting go. Initially, it may be difficult to discard. Like the way you find it difficult and challenging to throw away the wandering thoughts, to discard and let go. But I always use an example and metaphor and analogy of statements. Whenever he want to uh, drive the point, he want to make the point very clearly. For example, once he mentioned that showing all the dry leaves and dry twigs and all those litters scattered in the, within the compounds of the Jiravana Monastery. He called out to the disciple monk. Disciple, you do see the, all those litters and dry leaves and small dry twigs and very kind of litters scattered in the, within the compounds of this monastery. Yes, Penerva. Do any of you want to hold on to it? Keep it as your position and put it in your room, in your dwelling place. Of course not. Why? Finally, this is a litter. This is the garbage. This is useless. Why should we keep it in our room as our cherished possession? Monks, disciples, you have to have this attitude do a wandering thoughts, do with all the forms and feelings and memories and perceptions and all those consciousness and mind-related sub states. Once you are able to develop this kind of right attitude, everything will be okay, everything will be fine and easy to move on, whether you are spiritual journey, whether you are spiritual training. It's very wonderful. This drives the necessary point directly and make it very clear. In the same way, we have to understand the moment thoughts associated with the sense of pressure arise, we must know, oh, okay, this comes up, this will cause you, this will cause me more distraction, more <coughs> contamination of the mind. My unconscious flow will be contaminated with this kind of thought if I accept it. So just be it and let it be. Just let go. This is what it means. We know the deed. The that buff, Pali buffs, we know the deed. We means specially, a prefix. Not it means pull out. He specially pulls it out. Specially, why Buddha you specially? No ordinary people can do it. Ordinary people, they just accept it. They start to become restless. They start going out and doing this and that and looking there, here and there in order to do something to satisfy their desire, their craving. But in the case of the marriage who is on spiritual journey of purification, he must be very attentive and mindful to pull out it from one's own consciousness. That's what it means. We know that he pulled out especially by use of mindfulness. Bianti Krati. Bianti is a Pali word. It means being distant, being afar, and not associated. Krati, he, he does it so that it becomes dissociated. He, he moved away. He threw it out to a great distance. 
Another Bowen committee, this is the last bar. He calls that sensual thoughts, sensual desire, not to recur, not to regard, not to come back. How he did it? By not praying to the Buddha, Buddha, please help me to develop strength and courage so that I can live against such attemptations. He doesn't need to pray, he just observe it with mindfulness. Continue in consistent mindfulness. This mindfulness itself is a tool of remover, a tool of doing away with it. The moment he lost attention, the moment he, his mind is lack or sluggish, those sensual thoughts will overwhelm him. He will fail. Very clear. In the same way, Bora continue to explain regarding another thought. Open Bhyabada Vidaka Nadi Wasedi. In case any thought associated with irritated mind, angry mind, or thoughts of aversion arise in the mind, he doesn't accept it by reflecting properly and by use of the wisdom and mindfulness. But he, he just throw out, we know that he pull out by means of mindfulness, impersonal and detached mindfulness, without claiming ownership of that, that, that anger. Most people in the world, they used to claim ownership of their anger, their bad feeling. That's why a lot of conflicts, a lot of quarreling and arguments have been in the war. They keep claiming, I'm angry. She calls me angry. She do such and such a bad thing to me. They always react based on their ego and that wonderful dear I am me which create a lot of problems in everyday life. Because they claim ownership, they thought they are the owner of that anger, that aversion. And that anger manipulates their action. A meditator, even though he may not be in life in, he used that skillful mindfulness, that mindfulness key, to observe it right away immediately. The moment it arrives, just note it anger, anger, or angry thought, angry thought, or version of version. In case he doesn't like something, he doesn't like his pain, he doesn't like the food, he doesn't like any situation, he doesn't like any thought, he just remember back from the past very incidents. He just note it down and he just remove it immediately. By using mindfulness weapon, we know that he pull out that thoughts of anger and aversion. Bhyandi Grodi, he keep a safe distance. Nava Ongamidi, he make it so that it doesn't recur again by maintaining constant mindfulness. Most of us in daily life, we have thoughts, three major thoughts, thoughts of desire, wishing to enjoy this and that, wishing to get this and that, and lots of dislike and displeasure on aversion over something, over someone, over a situation going on in the parts of the war. Whenever such a negative, unwholesome mental thoughts and mental states arise, choose mindfulness and wisdom as a practical tool to handle with such kind of unwholesome mental occurrence. Open and we Nadi wasedi. What I continue to, to explain. In the same way, a meditator, at the moment, the thoughts associated with harming other people, based on one's bad feeling and revenge, and vengeful mental. Attitudes. 
he sincerely knows it. He just let it go of it. He doesn't accept it and do his mental of flow. This kind of thought, thought is called Wihinsa Vidaka. Wihinsa means wishing to cause harm. In simple English, sometimes we can translate maybe violence, thoughts associated with the violence, doing violent action to someone because we are really angry at this someone or something which had, which had done something bad or a bad experience, a bad situation going on. We want to do something even though we are sitting in meditation. Our mind is an angry mind and very busy mind doing unnecessary things all the time unless and until we can manage it by mindfulness. It will cause a lot of problems. That's what's going on in the big life among people. A meditator must be able to observe in case those thoughts arise, he must not accept it. We know that he must pull out. He should, he pull out. Johnny Grody, he give it, he put it at the distance so that it doesn't get closer. And now by our committee, he, he make it so that it doesn't recur again by maintaining constant mindfulness. So these are three major thoughts. In Buddhist days, there are some other thoughts. Altogether in Buddhist texts, and especially in Mahanidita texts, it mentioned about nine kind of nine kind of thoughts. Kama Vidaga, this is the first thought explained in this discourse. Bhyavara Vidaga, the thoughts of aversion. Who hands are Vidaga? The thoughts associated with causing harm to other people. And Yadi Vidika, thoughts associated with the family members and friends. And Janabra Vidika, thoughts associated with the location, politics, etc. Amra Vidika, thoughts associated with the do remain in life either forever, to give everything forever, permanently. Pranudya Dabi Down Davidaga, thoughts associated with the compassion for those suffering people in particular place or in particular situation. <clears throat> and Lava Sagara Siloga Bi Down Davidaga, thoughts wishing, wishing to gain this and that possession and that business, uh, wishing to get famous. I uh, wish to get a lot of publicity. Uh, and now when you deep down that we say, wishing to make a great impression among people, as I enlighten it, say, etc. In today's world, among human beings, there are billions and billions of thoughts with a lot of variety in, in nature and conditions. And, because the human minds and human consciousness are full of thoughts. Human beings are always thinking about this and that, nonstop, continuously, every day, except sleeping hours. Most of the time, in the wakeful hours of their daily life, they have millions and millions of thoughts every day. Among such thoughts, any thought associated with sensual pleasure, anger, or causing harm are totally negative. Only other thoughts may, be, may have different nature, mixed nature, or positive or negative nature. They may be harmless or they may be harmful, depending on the kind of thoughts they have. So in that I need to manage one's own thoughts by mindfulness by meditation, by his spiritual training. In the initial phase, it may be quite challenging, but with the practice, the skill develops to observe the wandering thoughts, to observe emotion, 
strong emotions, raw emotion, very well emotion, manageable emotion. What about the emotions come up? A skilled meditator who is skillful in using his mindfulness can manage it. If a person cannot manage his emotion, even though he claims, I have been practicing meditation a long time, if he still get upset and very temperamental and used to be very angry, then he's not actually developing. He just only physically practicing meditation. His spiritual nature is still remain totally out of the development, out of the actual development, actual progress. This is very important to remind oneself. Every situation is a training, a challenge. Every training, bad experience, and good experience are also a testing ground where you can test your mindfulness key. It's very important. Now, what I continue to explain. Open no pani, papaki akusli dummy, nadi wasi di. This last statement is very broad and very wide. Open no pani, papaki akusli dummy. Those unwholesome conditions and mental states are whenever they arise, whatever negative mental states arise. A meditator must use his meditative wisdom and he must use mindfulness not to accept it, not to take it up. By letting go, by not claiming ownership, but he must discard, he should, he discards. We know that he pulls out specially by use of mindfulness. Beyond the gravity, he, he throw it at great distance, dissociated with it. And now, Bawang Medi, he calls it not to recargo. We have a lot of miscellaneous kind of unwholesome mental states coming up in the mind sometimes. Once we note those negative and wholesome mental states arise, we must be able to know them. Don't they arise? Oh, unwholesome mental states are arising in me, in the mind, and then use mindfulness as a tool to remove them, to pull out them, to let them go, to throw them away and dissociate yourself with those unwholesome mental flow, unwholesome mental states. And so that they don't recur, they don't occur again. This is the generalized instruction set by Buddha in this discourse. Now, Buddha concludes this strategy. We got a prilaha. We know the other way one said, Te aswa, we got a prilaha now on the. In case a meditator lost his mindful God and let those unwholesome thoughts arise and remain there, even for a while, then subsequent unwholesome mental states, which cause stress and a burning situation will continue only after he can know them and be able to remove them with mindfulness. Those possible mental impurities will not arise continuously. And those stressful situations and all those contaminants and uh, was discontinued from arising, and they will come to a stop. Otherwise, they will keep harassing you, harassing the meditator. So, this is the conclusion 
regarding this strategy. Disciple, these taints and mental impurities are to be removed by means of pulling out by use of mindfulness and wisdom. Now, number seven strategy. Kadameja Bikwi Asua Bawana Padaba. Disciples, what mental taints and mental abilities are to be removed and to be transcended by means of development. This seven strategy is also very wide. Because what kind of development Buddha means in this statement? It means development of the positive mental qualities, which are contributing factors for development of inside knowledge, but the fruition knowledge, and wonderful enduring mental state of calm, leading all the way to a day of the cessation of suffering and leading all the way to a day of the Nibbana, that spiritual bliss and spiritual grace. These positive mental qualities are known as the Bojanga. All of you are quite familiar with the term Bojanga, factors of enlightenment. Actually, they are positive mental qualities which a meditator is working to develop, to increase little by little and bit by bit uh, and small increments in every moment and every hour of their constant mindfulness. They are not to be increased by praying. They are not to be increased by chanting. They are not to be increased by reading the very thick, voluminous Buddhist texts. They are to be developed in your inner being, in your inner consciousness by cultivating that wonderful positive mental state known as mindfulness mind. That mindfulness mind is not Rava's mind, not Jenny's mind. It is, it is the mindfulness itself. It has no green card, it has no social security number. It's a very wonderful quality of the consciousness. You have to choose your mind, transform it into wonderful mindfulness which is very wholesome, positive, and uncontaminated. It's a very wonderful, very wonderful approach mentioned by the Buddha. It is a within easy access and within easy reach of, uh, reach of everyone. If you are dedicated, if you are sincerely interested in spiritual development, Now, what I'm mission in this in explaining this strategy, how a person develop, is to develop these qualities. Ida bhikkhu bhikkhu, pati sankhaya niso sati sambojengam bhaveti. Here in this wall, in this noble teachings of the holy saints, disciple, a meditator. Developed sati mindfulness by having proper reflection and by making effort at the practice of the mindfulness. So the first step is to develop sati boj sri sambojanga. Pali word may sound complex. But it is very simple. Sati means the ability to keep the mind focused 
They really do keep the mind, remain calm on the object of observation. This is what steam means. Sam Bujinga is just only an adjective, an attribute, which means factors of enlightenment. But I want to give you more simple. That mindfulness can lead to knowing well, clearly, into the nature of mental and physical phenomena, which can break through the thick layer of ignorance and delusion, which is always clouded, which is always covered with the heavy layers of ego, known as I am me. This is how wonderful it is. Bali wo sati is mindfulness. Sam Bujinga is a combination of three words. Sam, body, and God. Sam means well, perfectly. Body means knowing and knowledge and enlightenment. Inga means component. Component of knowing well. Component of perfect enlightenment. Very wonderful words. The Palita in the self is self obedience and simple. A meditator, a yogi, start his spiritual journey. If he wants to use this seven strategy, he should practice meditation and let his mindfulness observe and let his mindfulness develop and increase by you know, keeping the mind focus on the object of meditation, without thinking about past, without thinking about future, just being at the present moment here and now. We don't need to think about past bad experience. Oh, this kind of person have done so many bad things to me. Oh, I have been, I have lived through such a bad and bad situation. It's so sad. You don't need to feel sad about that. You don't need to think about your good conditions in your life which have been in the past. You don't need to think about future because the reality of life is at the very present moment. Here and now, at this hour, not in the past hour, not in future hour. Once you are able to keep the mind, focus, on the object of meditation by having that wonderful, stable, strong mindfulness, then you are already embarked on the path, on the path to enlightenment. Meaning that mindfulness, it will lead you to development of special, perfect knowledge of enlightenment. Now, what I'm going to explain in, in this sentence, we will go nice down. 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 All together, four words. What I use four words. These are unique attributes of the mindfulness you maintain. If you know the meaning of this word, you will appreciate every moment of your practice. We will go nice down. That mindfulness is inclined toward real peace and real calm, dissociated from destruction, stressful, and painful situations of life. So this time, Bali what we got is very important to explain. We means of. We got means being, being of, being away from stressful disturbance and destruction.
both mental and physical, internal and external environment. Internally, your mind itself, when it becomes agitated and polluted with those unwholesome mental states. External means social environment, such as people or things that cause your mind disturbed and distracted. So if you develop this mindfulness as a first step, your mind will be slowly, slowly insulated against all those distractions. In Buddhist text, this time is clearly explained by various categories. For example, the Denga we wake up. Temporary peace and temporary seclusion and temporary dissociation. What you can get in this retreat and your home when you retire into your private rooms so that your family members cannot disturb you. You have to tell them, don't disturb me. I'm in practice and meditation. I'm in going to practice meditation. Please turn down the volume of TV or radio or your speak. Your speak. You can request very small way. And when you have such kind of support and conducive environment, and you practice meditation, you can have this drink out with Wicca, temporary peace and temporary quiet situation and being removed from those distractions. And another category of Wiwika is called Wikamana Wiwika. This Bali word Wikamana is very difficult to interpret into English. We means specially. Kamba means shaking up. Especially shaking up and especially dissociated. In this process, the peace and calm a person can enjoy last longer. It's sustaining, sustaining peace, sustaining quietude. Sustaining state of the being removed from distress, being in disturbing contaminants or things, mental state, negative mental states, or people, especially negative mental state in this case. For those people who have made progressive state and they are inside meditation, they can notice anger or desire not only become infrequent, they can notice they become less and less and reduce in frequency of incidents. But in Boris text, it is explaining that when a person have been able to attain the poor Rupa Jana and poor Arupa Janas, and all those mental impurities which used to arise frequently are uh, removed for longer duration of time and never returning. So this is a, what is called wake-up and now we wake up. Having shake up violently and, and keeping it calm for a certain duration of time. It is very similar to the way you keep your house close. Your house door close, all the windows and all the main doors and all the entrance are clearly locked for an indefinite period of time. You are safe inside your house. This is what is similar to 
we come up, we will come. Dream up with you guys at your windows. You sometimes open the doors and windows, the mosquitoes come in, and sometimes even a stranger come in, and then you close. You are doing temporarily. This is what dream up with you guys means. Every moment you maintain your mindfulness, no anger arise, no desire arise, no other negative thoughts arise, no other negative meditation arise. This way you keep your house windows closed by means of mindfulness. This is what dream up with you guys means. It is a temporary Come and temporary remove it. Welcome now, we guys. Uh, very much like uh, closing your doors and windows and every entry point of the, your house for a sudden period of fixed time. No one's allowed. This is what we come now, we guys like. Now, another category of Vivika is very interesting. It's called the Samocheta Vivika. This is a compound now, a combination of two Samocheta and Vivika. Samocheta is a kita now, and structurally with the prefix and roots, uh, which has a barrier meanings. Samocheta can be divided into Three words, san, u, sida. San means well. U means completely and totally. Sida means cut off. Something which has been cut off totally, which cannot be reattached. So it's a complete removal. We will got means peace um, removal by means of absolute cutting off. Never to be glued, never to be returned, never to be reattached. It refers to eradication, complete eradication, which occurs when a person attains a particular state of enlightenment. The first stage of enlightenment, known as Sotapati Mega and Sotapati Fla. The second stage of enlightenment, known as the Sakadagami Mega and Sakadagami Fla. And the third stage of enlightenment, known as Anagami Mega and Nagami Fla. The fourth stage of enlightenment, known as Arada Mega and Arada Fla. But depending on that, any stage one attain, specific mental impurities and defilements are totally removed. Never to recur again. This is called Samocheta Vivika. Do the removal. Being in peace because one has removed totally, including the roots, the roots of those defilements, like the Bodhats. In enlightening holy saints who have attained the, the fourth stage of enlightenment, they never recur. Their mental states are always unagitated and calm and peaceful, even in the face of the very bad situation in their life. That's why Buddha said, I have already quoted that wonderful word. I was born in the world, grew up and raised up in the world, I live in the world, but being detached from the world. These words are very beautiful and profound. They need a lot of explanation. They clearly show how the enlightening saints live in the society among human beings, but not in the way human beings, ordinary commoners suffer. They are in the waves of the sea, but they are not drowned under the waves. That's what it means. I'm just trying to explain by using this analogical expression of the sea waves. Enlightenment is saying they can 
right through the waves and the high sea of life, but they never get drowned. They never get drowned. They never remain submerged under the water and suffocated by emotion and suffering like the way we used to be. This is a very wonderful state of enlightened saints, how they live their life. Now, let me explain another stage of the Viveka. This is called the Nisrana. Nisrana Viveka. Nisrana is a combination of two words, Ni and Sarana. Ni means out and away. Out and away. Sara means to go, to get. And now means out of, out of moving out totally. This means that when a person enter into the nirvana state of cessation, then those mental impurities which have been cut through the, the third stage of smoke that we got by means of the bad infusion knowledge. Are never to be redeemed. They are more farther off. Like the way you left your own native countries and been settled down in the United States. All those things you used to live through, live among friends and families and those kind of things are gone. They are, they remain in a great distance and geographic location. In the same way, where you are able to in, into the state of the Nirvana, Nirvana bliss, and you are in Nisra Naviviqa, you are attaining it, completely distant from those mental impurities which are already far away, never ever to see them again. Never ever to see them again. Like the way one left the journey, never to return when a person die. When a person go back to a country on an aeroplane, the roads be friends and family members who are seeing him all at the airport, they just say goodbye and they are smiling because they thought he's coming back one day. But when a person go forever upon death, he never to return. He never come to say, don't worry, I'm in such and such heaven. It's very wonderful. No one come to report once, once life, once a person die. It is final departure. The journey of no return. In the same way, when a person is in, has entered into the Nipani bliss, those defilements never to return. This is what the word Nisrana means. Nisrana means exit in simple English. It's a very simple explanation of the word by this English word. Exit. Nisrana we guys exit. Removal by being exited from it totally. Never to be reconnected. Now all together, these are four kind of the we will guards. So Sadi Bujinga, you are trying to develop can lead to attaining all those kind of four vivikas. That's what it means. It's very profound and very beautiful words. So don't underestimate your mindfulness practice. The mindfulness you are developing through and you are trying to develop can lead to attaining of these four kind of peace and removal of the, those mental impurities and taints. How wonderful it is. 
And every moment of your mindfulness is you already enter into the jenga we've got. Temporary cessation and temporary peace and temporary removal. And if you can maintain that mindfulness for 15 minutes or one hour, you are entering into the jenga we got for one hour. So how wonderful it is. It's very much inspiring to learn about the Buddha's world. Now the skin attributes, Viraga Nesita. This is also a compound noun, Viraga Nesita. We means off, without. Raga means clinging, without clinging. Nesita means inclined to. That mindfulness, Sati, will lead to development of non-clinging, how simple and how clear. It's very accessible. We may thought these butching us off, out of our reach. We cannot develop it. We cannot attain Nirvana. We cannot take part in fruition knowledge. We may thought, we may be disheartened sometimes because one may have a lot of wandering thoughts and one has to struggle with the emotions and wandering thoughts and pains, etc. Pains and wandering thoughts and restless mind are necessary part of the training. They are the better crowns of the meditator. You must train how to shoot your enemy right on the target. It's your duty to aim at the target correctly and shoot it. This is a wonderful trainer. You are already equipped with mindfulness calm. Now let me continue to explain this word. Huiraga Nesita. The mindfulness you are developing and trying to develop and lead to development of non-clinging. Why? Non-clinging is the way to wonderful, lasting peace and calm. We used to cling all the time, clinging to me and my, clinging to my families and my possession, clinging to my anger and my desire and my sadness. We never stop attaching, we never stop clinging, we never stop holding on to everything, even in the last moment of our life, we are still clinging to our families and friends until the last moment of death. We must know our deeply ingrained and family grounded attachment to our self and our egos and our souls and our families. And, uh, once we know that, we must understand the clinging is the, the start of the suffering. May all of you be able to apply these wonderful strategies of Buddha. May all of you be able to understand all these strategies simply and clearly and be able to apply them in your spiritual training and practice. May you progress in your practice and may you be successful in your spiritual path. Sorry, sorry.